To me, Luca is a testament to family and to the healing power of food. Frank and Doug Fleischman turned this place, which was at the time a Chinese restaurant and a bike repair shop before that, into this cool little Italian joint in 2002. I had left the restaurant business some years earlier, but you don't really ever leave the restaurant business. This industry gave me my first job at 14. It paid my way through college. It allowed me to travel the world and work in countries as part of an amazing, inclusive, generous community. But I thought I was done with all of that. I was teaching high school English, pregnant with our second son, just appreciating my husband and his partner and this masterpiece that they created together. We opened Luca d'Italia, named for our son Luca, on his first birthday, Valentine's Day, for love, for luck. Six weeks later, Doug was on his way home after work when he was struck and killed by a drunk driver. Our family went through an intense grieving period. I didn't see it at the time, but looking back, it's so obvious, so clear, that Frank processed this loss through cooking. Frank's way is to cook to the other side of an obsession. And at Luca, it started with the pasta. Hand cranked for hours and hours, every shape you can imagine. Not just bucatini and rigatoni, annulotti, ravioli, but trumpets, flowers, ears, elbows with sauces so intensely flavorful as to be heady. Just insane. Try this with breadcrumbs, he'd say, or try this with the guanciale. And I did. We all did. And then it was the meat. I, I think I could figure out salumi, he said. <laughs> and Frank took to old handwritten cookbooks from his grandmother, from my grandmother. He picked fights with the health department over the correct temperature for prosciutto, and it helped with his anger at the world. This is before Google, mind you, so... Frank took to libraries and telephone calls, and we nearly went to cheese prison. Cheese prison. It's a thing, but I digress. Anyway, we wound up with a basement filled with prosciutto, brasiola, mortadella, ham, until he passed that baton. And then he started obsessing on cheese, mozzarella, ricotta, burrata. And then it was pizza. And Mike Mancarella came into the restaurant and forged this beautiful wood-fired oven so that you could get the perfect char on the crust. Once Marco was born, he and Luca spent the next two years on this block where Luca Natalia sits. It was a second home. I learned how to do the books here, write a schedule, pay business taxes, create training manuals. I bust and I waited with the most amazing friends. I nursed in the basement. Marco's first sweet food was a creme fraiche gelato from Frank's ice cream period. And it's never stopped. I feel like Frank got to the other side of processing his grief but he is not finished with Luca, not by a long shot. It just keeps evolving into new layers of craftsmanship, seduction, and truly, everything in this room is beautiful to me. I mean, beautiful, because this is the home we created when the world was at tilt. And it is unique to our story, my story, Frank's story, uh, our story of family and loss and reinvention. And it's a story we invite you into, from the haiku or the sign out front, to garage doors that open right up out the side of the building, to Luca's charcoal portrait on the wall. Everything in this room speaks to pouring our souls into comfort and beauty, and in Frank's case, flavor. In the introduction of the Luca cookbook, I use a quote from Julia Child, and I'm just going to use it again because it's so perfect to what we do here. She was talking about a meatloaf and said, it's so beautiful you can just tell someone's fingers have bent all over it. And... That's Luca. That's us.